Hey guys, and welcome to Hot Gastro. In today's presentation, we will be covering Barrett's esophagus. And if you guys are familiar with my videos, you would have realized that this pathology has come up in two other videos, and those are GERD and esophageal cancer. So I'm hoping by the end of this presentation, you would understand why the three are so closely related. So let's get started. What is Barrett's esophagus? Barrett's esophagus refers to an abnormal change or metaplasia in the cells of the lower portion of the esophagus. It is characterized by the replacement of the normal stratified squamous epithelial lining of the esophagus by simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells, which are cells that are usually found lower in the GI tract. Barrett's esophagus is a serious complication of GERD, which is gastroesophageal reflux disease, and about 10% of people with chronic symptoms of GERD develop Barrett's esophagus. If you guys are interested in watching the presentation I did on GERD, I will put a link in the description for that video. So in the picture below, you can see A, which is the usual normal uh, unpathological version of the esophagus. And this is normal squamous epithelium. Everything is grand, everything is beautiful. And on the right here, you can see what happens is that the columnar epithelium start to line the esophagus and this is actually intestinal metaplasia so basically all that means is the cells that usually line the intestine start to line the esophagus the lower portion of the esophagus and you can see down here below that's actually the gastroesophageal junction where the esophagus meets the stomach and this is usually the place that Barrett's esophagus can be found epidemiology the incidence in the United States among Caucasian men is eight times the rate among Caucasian women and five times greater than African American men. Overall, the male to female ratio of Barrett's esophagus is 10 to 1. Several studies have estimated the prevalence of Barrett's esophagus in the general population to be about 1.3% to about 1.6% in two European populations, Italian and Swedish and about 3.6% in a Korean population. Signs and symptoms. Barrett's esophagus does not have any specific symptoms, but patients with Barrett's esophagus will usually have symptoms related to chronic GERD. These are some of them. Frequent and long-standing heartburn, trouble swallowing, which is called dysphagia, vomiting blood, which is called hematomnesis, pain under the sternum, where the esophagus meets the stomach and unintentional weight loss because eating is painful and this is called adenophagia. Risk factors. Some risk factors associated with Barrett's esophagus include age over 50, male sex, white race, having a hiatal hernia, having long-standing GERD and being overweight especially if that weight is carried around the abdomen. How is Barrett's esophagus diagnosed? Because there are often no specific symptoms to distinguish chronic reflux and a proper Barrett's esophagus, the diagnosis can only be made with an upper GI endoscopy. Both macroscopic from endoscopy and microscopic positive findings are required to make a diagnosis. Barrett's esophagus is recognized as the presence of columnar epithelium in the lower esophagus, replacing the normal squamous cell epithelium. So in the picture on the right here, you can see what a gastroenterologist would see in a patient with Barrett's esophagus on an endoscopy. And you guys can clearly see here normal squamous epithelial above and below we have the presence of columnar epithelium which has started to line the distal part of the esophagus. On the left, I've put in a picture which shows what a normal esophageal lining looks like and then when columnar cells and goblet cells start to appear, and this is called Barrett's esophagus, and as that dysplasia, which is a change in cell type from the squamous to the columnar cells appears, this is the evolution of the disease. So we have normal lining, Barrett's esophagus cells, low grade dysplasia, high grade dysplasia, and eventually it leads to an invasive carcinoma. And if you watched my video on esophageal cancer, 
you guys would know that people with Barrett's esophagus are actually very prone to developing an adenocarcinoma. I'll put a link in the description for that video as well. Why endoscopy with biopsy? So as I discussed in the previous slide, patients suspected of having Barrett's esophagus would need macroscopic and microscopic positive changes. And in order for us to be able to view these cells on the microscope, we will need to be able to take a tissue sample, which is called a biopsy. The biopsy is not just taken to confirm the cellular metaplasia, but is also taken and examined for the presence of precancerous cells or cancer. Screening in Barrett's esophagus. Screening endoscopy is recommended among males over the age of 60 who have chronic reflux symptoms that are of long duration and are not controlled despite treatment. Can Barrett's esophagus be treated? One of the primary goals of the treatment is to prevent or slow down the development of Barrett's esophagus by treating and controlling the acid reflux. This can be done with lifestyle changes and medication as well as some surgical approaches. Lifestyle changes. Fatty foods, chocolate, caffeine, spicy foods, and peppermint can aggravate reflux and should therefore be avoided. Alcohol, caffeinated drinks, and tobacco should also be avoided. Weight loss is also recommended if you are overweight because being overweight increases the risk of reflux disease. Sleeping with the head of the bed elevated. Sleeping with the head raised can help prevent the acid in the stomach from flowing up into the esophagus. Don't lie down for three hours after eating. Take all medicines with plenty of water. Medical treatment. Drug treatment in Barrett's esophagus is also aimed at treating gastroesophageal reflux disease. The medications used in the treatment of GERD include proton pump inhibitors that reduce the production of stomach acid, antacids which neutralize stomach acid, H2 blockers that lessen the release of stomach acid, and promotility agents which are drugs that speed up the movement of food from the stomach into the intestines. Treatments that specifically target Barrett's esophagus. There are several treatments, including surgery, that are designed specifically to focus on the abnormal tissue. They include radiofrequency ablation, or RFA, which uses radio waves delivered through an endoscope inserted into the esophagus to destroy abnormal cells while protecting the healthy cells underneath. Another procedure is called photodynamic therapy, or PDT. This process uses a laser through an endoscope to kill abnormal cells in the lining without damaging normal tissue. Before the procedure, the patient takes a drug known as photofrin, which causes cells to become light sensitive. Below is an example of how radiofrequency ablation works. Continuing with treatments that specifically target Barrett's esophagus, we have endoscopic spray cryotherapy, which is a newer technique that applies cold nitrogen or carbon dioxide gas through the endoscope to freeze the abnormal cells. Another option is endoscopic mucosal resection, or EMR, which lifts the abnormal lining and cuts it off the wall of the esophagus before it's removed through the endoscope. The goal is to remove any precancerous or cancer cells contained in the lining. If cancer cells are present, an ultrasound is done first to be sure the cancer hasn't moved deeper into the esophagus walls. And finally, the last option, which is surgery to remove most of the esophagus. This is called an esophagectomy. And this is an option in cases where severe precancerous cells or dysplastic cells or cancerous cells have been diagnosed. The earlier the surgery is done following the diagnosis, the better the chance for a cure. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. I will also link the other videos I discussed during this presentation. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.